So there appeared to be a viral video where at a Memorial Day commemoration event, a veteran's mic was cut off when he seemed to start talking about uh, some interesting origins of Memorial Day. It was like one of the first celebrations uh, for Memorial Day that was done. Um, it was actually African Americans. And so he starts talking about it. It's something that's not really talked about. I didn't know about it. And what you're going to see is, and this is something common we see, I've seen a couple of valedictorian speeches where, you know, they uh, started talking about, they started criticizing the school and they cut them off. And cutting them off really is not a good strategy. It doesn't make sense. Um, I'll explain later. But go ahead and check out this clip. Memorial Day was born out of necessity. After the American Civil War, the battered United States was faced with the task of burying 600,000 to 800,000 men and women who had lost their lives in that service, both Union and Confederate. It was the biggest, bloodiest military conflict in American history. The first national commemoration of Memorial Day as attributed to Arlington Cemetery, May 30th, 1868, where both Union soldiers and Confederates were buried. Several towns across the country claimed fame to being the first Memorial Day service, where people went out decorated graves, and rem which remains a central activity of Memorial Day. But, Something as different has happened in recorded history that we're not aware of. It wasn't until a remarkable discovery in a dusty Harvard archive that in late 1990s, a historian discovered several interesting newspaper clippings and handwritten notes. Memorial Day was first commemorated by an organized group of black freed slaves less than a month after the Confederacy surrendered. Recent years, the origins of how and where Decoration Day began has sparked lively debate amongst historians. However, Yale historian David Blight, asserting the holiday is rooted in a moving ceremony, was conducted by freed slaves on May 1st, 1865, at the tattered remains of Confederate prisoner of war camp. It was a Charleston Washington race course and jockey club, today known as Hampton Park. The ceremony is to believe to have included a parade of as many as 10,000 people, including 3,000 African-American school children singing the Union marching song, John Brown's Body. They were carrying armfuls of flowers and went to decorated the graves. Interesting that there would be a tie back to Hudson with that song from John Brown. Most importantly, the weather, Charleston's Decoration Day was the first, is attended by Charleston's black community. Mike. AJ, Mike. <laughs> we'll continue on. This is why you moved in closer so you can hear this. <laughs> okay, most importantly, uh, two weeks prior to the ceremony, the former slaves and workmen exhumed a mass grave of 240 Union soldiers and officers. They then took those remains and buried them in individual graves with honors. Now, each soldier was given a proper burial. They constructed a fence to protect the cemetery site and erected a sign over the entrance that reads, Martyrs of the Race Course. The dead prisoners of war at the racetrack must have seemed especially worthy of the honor that former slaves had in treating their remains because there was a tie between <coughs> the slaves at that time and the Union officers and soldiers because both suffered imprisonment and mistreatment by their captors. Not surprisingly, many white Southerners who had supported the Confederacy did not feel compelled to spend a day decorating the graves of their former enemies. I can understand that, being in the military. But 
in the following years it was the african americans in the south who perpetuated and kept alive the memorial day tradition at that time now my generation probably some of you liz grew up listening to the radio and listening to paul harvey the commentator who at the end of his specials would say and now you know the rest of the story well now you too know the rest of the story about memorial day if you visited this morning's tribute to the fallen heroes so as you can see there he cited a yale historian who basically gave one of the first celebrations um, of memorial day that was done by african americans also uh, explains that uh, this group of African Americans uh, dug up a mass grave uh, of dead Union soldiers and actually gave them individual burials. And so uh, it was, you know, really dope that the guy did that. You know, I didn't know about that at all. And so he's really bringing awareness. And I definitely think that there's a really big deficiency in terms of African American history in the U.S. Especially it's sad with the whole you know, Black History Month, but stuff like this, things like Juneteenth or the Tulsa Race Massacre, all of this kind of stuff is not really taught in schools. Um, generally speaking, you know, I think countries don't like uh, to teach uh, their people about the bad things that they did to groups of people. But this is a really, really big deficiency, and it's very stupid in the long term for your country. Um, unless you want something bad like that to continue happening, then I guess it would be good for you. But, you know, when you look at Germany and what happened with, you know, uh, Nazi Germany and what happened afterwards, you know, it really only was able to change because the younger people decided to uh, understand what, you know, the Nazis did and it was wrong and they moved on and said, this is very wrong. Um, you know, even now, countries like Japan and China, they don't, you know, uh, they don't really teach their people about the bad stuff that was done to them, you know, by their government or that their government did to other people. Obviously, the Imperial Japan was really, really horrible, horrible, horrible in World War II. You know, China um, often massacres its own people during protests. So you see this kind of thing often. But, you know, if you really want to move in a proper direction, you have to face the history um, of your nation, you really have to move on and be like, that was fucked up, let's do the right thing. And so there's not enough talk about black veterans and, you know, what they did during World War One and World War Two and Buffalo Soldiers and all this other stuff. For some reason, that is very, very deficient in American history and general knowledge. Like, I didn't know about this, and the fact that he would say that is incredibly respectable, and I really, you know... I, I just, I think that that was a really good thing for him to do. It educates basically everybody, because I don't think many people knew this, and gives a lot of context to real history. I don't know why you wouldn't want that said. The fact that his mic was cut off was really fucked up. Um, you know, does cutting out the mic even actually accomplish anything if you're the person cutting out the mic? I feel like when you cut out the mic... You're giving them more power and you're essentially making yourself look like an idiot and the wrong person. And so I see that happen with the valedictorian speeches where they cut off the valed valedictorian. And it's just like, dude, you're, you're, doing, you're having the opposite effect of with what, what you were doing. Um, and so this was just really cool to see it's messed up that they cut uh, the man's mic. He's a very respectable man. have a lot of respect for him and hopefully we can really learn more about real American history, not uh, the flowery stuff that you hear about, um, you know, especially I would imagine in southern states, because my understanding of the way education works, it's heavily state by state based. And so who knows what the education is like in Alabama versus like California or something like that. So this is a really cool story.